just in case you were lost in the sauce, looking for something entertaining to tune into, something that's going to stimulate those mental cells of yours while also make you laugh, something that's going to make you smile, and it's going to make you happy inside. Welcome to Positive Vibes, maybe. I'm your host. I go by the name of Dash Dante Smith. You know, and you guys have tapped into episode 188, A Poet's Insight. So today we're going to be joined by two guests that were on the show recently, you know. And during that episode, they talked to us about their event that they had at the time, which was BDSM, you know. And we offered them a chance to come out, to come back and join the show, to tell us about their upcoming events and anything else they had coming through because they were just, they just dropped so many gems. They were just such enjoyable guests that, you know, we just wanted to have them back and just kind of display and talk to us about what they had going on. So tonight we're going to be joined by the ladies of the Insight 513, talk about their upcoming event, you know, and all that it entails, and then, you know, make a fruitful conversation out of it all. So... As I post this topic for tonight's episode to anyone that enters the room, how are you doing? What is the energy? What is the vibes on this this steamy Sunday afternoon? Well, technically evening at this point, you know, but it's been steamy. It's been a hot one. You know, summer is definitely here, guys. It's hot outside. You know you need something cool and refreshing to, to sink your mouth into, you know, something to cool you down. So tap in. Got those smoothies on deck, Fly Mount smoothies available. Just head on, head on over to Fly Mount Catering. Place your order in today. Have your smoothie tonight, you know, or tomorrow, you know, whenever you need it, whenever you need to get situated. But definitely tap in. Keep yourself cool, hydrated, and drink something delicious, you know. Also, the menu gonna be up for food. And I'll be selling food items as well soon. So once that menu go up, it'll be available to you all then. Uh, whenever my guests are ready to jump in, we'll start off tonight's conversation. But until then, you know, like, um, what's the energy, guys? You know, like this Sunday has been, this Sunday has been really good. Been shit done this morning so far. Been enjoyable as well. Did the morning cooking for the family, so that was that was love. Uh, family really got was really happy about that. Jenny, what's good with you? Uh, I did hey, something. What's going on, Jamal? <laughs> I see you got the guns out. I see you. <laughs> it's a hot day, bro. <laughs> I understand. You know, the sun is out, the buns are out, and the guns are out, apparently. How you doing, love? It's Divine Styles. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you gentlemen doing? Can you, know, you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> My, my partner with the so we're actually at an event. Um, so we kind of dipped out to do this. <laughs> you know, we be on a move. You know, you know, we all the way in. Um, where the hell are we at? Ben, no, we're in Bethlehem, PA, right now. Okay, okay, not too far from us. So a couple of our partners are doing. Um, uh, it's called. Uh, sweetest taboo so that they have an event going on right now and we had to come out and show some love and some support um so my partner's grabbing some cocktails for us because we need cocktails <laughs> <laughs> always need cocktails right on um so how are you gentlemen doing oh we're we doing good you know good spirits it's sunday you know yes Everybody is taking care of the vibes is right. Energy Sunday, is up. Sunday. Yeah. Keep it cool and hot, day of the week, for real, for real. Sunday is the day you get to, to chill, relax, unwind, reflect. You know. Where are you eating? Who? Oh, I don't know what he. Eat. I ain't get a chance. I've been running around all day, so I ain't get a chance to have no food yet. So I got like a fish sandwich, a couple of fish sandwiches, if y'all don't mind. I promise I yes. won't no food in my I was just I asking. I won't with no food in my <laughs> I was just asking because you tearing it up, whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> How That's you feeling? All. I'm right. doing good. We've been running crazy. Like, I've been so busy. We've both been, like, hectic. Like, 
Today was the first day. Well, into this morning was the first day I slept for more than three hours. Oh, same. So it was nice to get some sleep. Um, I've been running on two and a half hours of sleep for about four weeks, for about a month and a half now. So. Oh, Lord. It was nice to, it was nice to get some sleep. Damn. I yeah, thought I so, had it bad. I only did it for a week, and I was already feeling the pain. Like, no, it's been about a month for me. So I, um, I, um, I'm a chef and a caterer. So right now I'm working with the Philadelphia Project. And I do the outreach program, so I feed the people who go out and do outreach. Um, they come back to me, and I feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I'm up at 4 a.m. cooking breakfast and prepping for lunch at Restaurant Depot every other damn day. Um, it's, it's just been hectic. So after that, I'm out the door. I leave, I leave them about 7, 8 o'clock at night. And then I'm out doing shows, so promoting, and it's been hectic. It's been crazy, but I'm Damn. glad to be back on the show. Sounds like it. I'm glad you came back, and we gotta connect too about the about Restaurant Depot too, because I gotta get a membership there. I'm in the club yes. I'm myself, and I actually been looking at it, and trying to purchase a membership from you guys, get a little more ingredients and stuff at a cheaper brand, you know. And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, both I love Restaurant Depot. I'm in there so much. I know all the cashiers. They, <laughs> that's why I need. I need to connect. I need you to put me down. I wanna. I wanna be with the superstars. So when I come through, they know how to take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yes. Oh, Mr. Von Styles, how do you yes. sustain yourself with windows in which go weeks to? months and a half with just two, three hours of sleep. What sustains you and keeps you awake for those periods of time before you get back to actually having a regular sleep? Do regular you really want to you really wanna know? Of course. Yeah. I masturbate a lot. Respect. Oh okay. Respect. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Same. So for some people it makes them sleepy. For me it's like uh a Red Bull. So yes. <laughs> And here she is with the cocktail. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, Ms. hello. <laughs> hey. Coming hello, through with the cocktails. Man, so with I was that, just, with I that, that um, you know, I like I like your answer to it, Dad. It, that <laughs> I like your answer. Energy. More energy. It's that I do. I meditate. Um. Mm -hmm. Meditation and masturbation get me through. Okay. Yes. Yes. The two M's. Can't go a day. <laughs> Can't go a day without those two. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Now, do you feel like if you masturbate too much, like that it drains from you, like or makes you uh, too, um, or does it make you overly emo overly energetic? Does it drain from you? Like, uh -huh. Right, For me, too. there's no such thing as overly energetic, but I have to mess. I have to have an orgasm. I'm not gonna say masturbate. I have to have an orgasm at least twice a day. Oh shit! Okay. So I, I go for it. I usually get three, but I go for two, two at the at the least. Okay. Okay. So. And what what happens when you don't when you don't get that need, man? Like, are you like more irritable or something? I, I am, and I'm sleepy. Oh. I'm irritable. I'm sleepy, and my concentration is all right. I'll be like, she be mad, unproductive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if my concentration, we is, be mad, is unproductive. unproductive. <laughs> it's like I can't focus. I can't concentrate. I need. I, it's it's a it's a thing. They should have it in offices. Like you should have a designated twenty minute orgasm break. But you know, we also release different, you know, um, uh, hormones and stuff afterwards. So whereas guys feel more drained, a lot of times we are more energized. Um, you know, we actually release a little more happy um, <laughs> hormone than you guys. So, you know, a lot of times guys are like, oh, why is she ready for round two already? It's it's the hormones. It's not, you know, <laughs> we're all just energizer bunnies, but you know, it is a booster for us. I heard you say it, it's a Red Bull. <laughs> you it's know? 
Because yeah. for me, it's more of the, yeah, how you said, drain, being drained afterwards. Like, if I do it too much, I'm I'm almost draining myself to the point where now I'm taking a, a small reprieve from even from even uh, masturbation where I'm just like, um, I'm all, well, I'm, 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 I'm keeping from sex, all sexual activity as a whole right now just to kind of give myself a. That's, a I've done that. I've, I've fasted for a whole 30 days. Just to, like, even, to with doing, even with doing this event, like, I fasted. So, and how often is the fasting process? How often do I fast? Yeah. Um, I try to fast at least three times a year. Okay. And it's usually for about 30 days. How about you, JJ? I never fast by choice. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> never fast by choice <laughs> and uh you know to even like abstain completely you know from actual orgasms nah i haven't i don't recall taking any of those kinds of breaks in life <laughs> <laughs> it's just i don't know it's 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 daily functionality like i don't know it's just kind of like i wake That's up in the cute. morning before i roll my L. you know i do what i gotta do make my coffee and I'm good to go. So it's just, it's kind of ritualistic for me. Same thing at the end of the night, you know, like once I complete my day, it's like, all right, you know, you did good. You deserve this. So, <laughs> and I give myself a pat on the back or a pat wherever I need to be patted. And yeah, that's just kind of how that goes. I don't, I don't see any abstinence necessary in my day to day. <laughs> like, that's understandable, yeah. Me, I need it sometimes. I need to. I need to refocus myself sometimes. So, uh, sustaining from it, from it, 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 it gears my focus towards something else. So it's easy for me to not focus on that because at this age in my life, or at this point in my life, sometimes getting an orgasm and sexual encounters become kind of a more of a need than they should be. So mm. just to prove to myself that I can, you know, I kind of just, I just don't. I It'd be hard that. as shit. Right, right. But after it's all done, that said and done, that 31, that 31st day, <laughs> everybody's getting it. Everybody. Everybody's getting all of this heat I got. <laughs> I'm a cat on a prowl, so you a lucky motherfucker if you cross my path. I understand that. I understand. That. So I do got a question for the both of y'all because this is a, something I've always been curious about with females in general. Like, what stimulates you to to get to that masturbation level? Like, what stimulating you? Like, are like what videos are you watching? Like, what's the like like when I'm searching for porn? Like, it's like particular things I'm looking for. Like, I'm looking for a sister, I'm looking for big boobs, big ass. You know something I know that's already going to stimulate me. What is it for you guys that does it for y'all? Or Ooh. if it is something. Or if it's just um, a pure, you know, I like to play with myself and that's just a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for me, I, I have something called um, porno moments in my head. Or as men like to call them, I have a spank bank. So I watch <laughs> Pornhub sometimes. Or XXX, but for the most part, I just go off what's already in my head. I have enough sexual experiences that I really don't need to watch nobody else. I like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. It's nothing needed. It's nothing. I just need silence. And that's it. I'm dead serious. Good. I'm dead serious. Like I hate when the TV is on. I hate when like you know the music is on. I just yeah, just me and me. That's it. I don't need anything to get me there. Like I don't know. My body just kind of tells me. Why would I need? Because I'm here. It's like you don't. This is off. I mean, the volume on this is down. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> I kept hearing the noise. She ain't hear shit. I did. <laughs> she be tripping. <laughs> so, babe, I know we had you in here before. I was unable to join y'all, unfortunately. Our evening, they held it down beautifully for that episode. So, I'm kind of upstairs. 
as far as what you guys are building, if you don't mind, could y'all please just explain to everybody who's well as to me myself, just what inspired the name Insight, even to the degree that you yeah. felt be with the Okay, uh, thank you for asking that. I'll dive into that. Um, so it was it was basically an experience. So that when we came up with the idea of putting together open mics, we're like, oh, we don't want to do regular open mics. We want it to be an experience. So then we started talking about topics and things like that and how we were going to bring those experiences and what type of topics and why. So it was always like, let's do topics where, you know, those discussions need to be had. So BDSM, uh, men's mental health, local graffiti artists, women's mental health, poet, um, author, you know, book signings and things like that, like things that we don't get on the regular, things that the, the hood, the community doesn't get on the regular. We want to make it the norm. So we were like, oh, you know, what can we call ourselves? And we were like, well, what are we bringing? We're bringing people insight into those topics. Every single event, when you walk away, like not only should your vibes and your soul be, you know, nourished, um, but you should walk away inquisitive about something or satisfied that you got the information on that topic. And um, so the insight is because, you know, we classy. Right, yeah, the, the <laughs> extra E. We classy with it. And that's, yeah, that's that's how we came up with that. Exactly. Our experiences are immersive. We want people to be involved. We want people to um, ask questions. We want people to, you know, and a lot of times people are um, reluctant to ask certain types of questions, especially with the BDSM event. So we answer those questions before they have a chance to ask them. Um, and it but makes we people always more comfortable. Question. And then we always, you know, we make sure we're open to people asking questions. I have my tools there. I always ask, does anybody want to try this? You want to know what it feels like? Like I've hit people with my, my equipment before just so they can get that, that feeling of it. Like it's important that, you know, a lot of times you ever, somebody said they're going to smack you and you're, you're, anticipating the smack but then you actually get hit and it's like oh that wasn't as bad as i thought it was it's yeah. the same thing with the equipment that i use sometimes it's not as bad as you think it is in your head and you have this preconceived notion of what bdsm is oh she getting her ass she out here whooping people's ass and putting them in all this pain and it's <laughs> not always that you know it can be a very sensual feeling it can be a very erotic it's arousing for some people you hit some person if you hit a person the right way you're hitting a specific type of nerve and that um you know it ignites that pleasure in your mind so everybody some people like getting their nipples pinched that's the erogenous zone you know so, it's so that's things. what people were learning at, at exactly. that particular event but all of our other events bring insight to other topics as well. Exactly. So we had the men's mental health, um, which is a subject that, you know, has been put on the back burner for so long. And now that we're at a point in society where people are realizing black people have fucking trauma, you know, we are not strong. We're strong because people tell us we have to be, not because we want to be. So, especially with our black men. So, it was important for us to bring this to the forefront and have a serious conversation with our black men about their trauma, about helping them heal uh, the best way we know how. Because we're not men. We don't know exactly what you need. So, having a discussion where we can sit down and actually ask questions and have um, black men tell us, you know, this is what my life is. This is what it's like in a day being me. And we want to hear that because we want you, we all want our black men to know that we're here for them. So we're bringing insight not only to the subject, but to women and to other people that, you know, it's important that we, you know, encourage our black men. We, we let them know that we are listening, that we understand that it's not necessary for you to have this pride about your emotions. Because I know a lot of times, like, I know me growing up in the 80s and the 90s, it was like, oh, men, don't, you ain't supposed to cry. You a pussy if you crying. Like, no, we're not in that society no more. 
and we want our black men to know that it's okay. Just like the one after that. What's that one? The women's mental health? The women's mental health, same thing. Like we want, we want to have our community, we want to bring our community together. So that's basically what our events are about. And that's love. So what's the event uh, that's upcoming now? What's that uh, topic matter? Is that the men's mental health? Um, yes. So technically, yes. Uh, our next event will be the men's mental health. We had an event scheduled uh, this Thursday, the 21st, but we will have to postpone that event. Uh, that event is focused on highlighting uh, the day-to-day -day life of local graffiti artists, um, art and healing and self-reflection and stuff like that. But like I said, we did have to postpone it due to a couple of um, guests getting covid so, uh, yeah, you know, COVID still fucking shit up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. You know, it's all good. We didn't want to, you know, put together anything half-assed. When we bring something, we won't bring all the insight. So uh, we wasn't just going to bring a little bit of insight. Uh, <laughs> so our next event, it will be in August. It'll be on a Saturday. We have not locked in on a date yet. Um, uh, all of our previous events were on Thursdays, but for this men's mental health one, uh, we are actually making it a, a hip hop and healing all white party. Um, so it's a lot of elements to it. It's a lot of uh, just, you know, cross, cross, breaking those barriers in subjects that should be crossing more. So, you know, hip hop and healing. When we talk about hip hop, it's always like, oh, hip hop is so detrimental to the community. Hip hop is bitches and hoes and hip hop is killing this and da, 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 da. But we don't talk about how hip hop is healing, how hip hop stopped this person from doing some of those things, how hip hop helped somebody get through these things. So, um, yeah, we definitely want to highlight that. And we know, like, for men, a lot of times, that's what they go to. They go to their music. They, you know, throw their music on and listen to Jay-Z. And they throw it on Biggie and because they're relating to that struggle. They're relating to the way that man is releasing his pain and stuff like that. So we just want to really highlight the importance of hip-hop uh, in the community, in our Black healing community, because Hip hop is a crown. It is a jewel. It is a gem that is so needed, so necessary. So, yeah, we want to try to continue erasing that stigma off of hip hop, especially with this new genre of you know hip hop that we're do that yes. we hear um, that we might not necessarily relate to, but maybe it's healing for their generation. So as far as our poets panel, we did make sure we try to, you know, cross different generations. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, you know, someone in their late 50s, uh, someone in their 40s. We've got 20s. We want representation of all of our Black men and all of their struggle in today's time, how they're dealing with it, and, you know, how we can support. So, yeah, that event is going to be really, really, really dope. We're super excited about that one. Not that we weren't excited about the graffiti one, uh, but that was kind of a, a newer, uh, uh, it was an opportunity that came about. And so we took it, but uh, it just wasn't meant to be at this time. So we will try to circle back around with that one when we get a chance to, but we're just going to move forward on with our next event because this event was always supposed to be, um, you know, in August. Um, it's, it's, you know, the, we had four set events. Uh, the BDSM, the men's mental health, the women's mental health, and uh, we have a thing that we want to do where it's a poet's book signing. Mm -hmm. So um, whatever local poets wrote books or published authors, we want to have them come out, read something from their book. It's hard for poets to push their books. A lot of people know poets off of spoken word, but, you know, we don't, we, we kind of tend to forget, like, you know, how we fell in love with Maya Angelou and Langston Hughes. and so we, we fell in love with them by reading them. I, I didn't hear nothing with Langston Hughes up on the stage and we snap, exactly. snapping it up. But I still love his work to pieces. So the writing is so important. The reading is so important. Um, so, yeah, that's something that we want to kind of do every so often, these four events. Um, BDSM, because... Intimacy is part of everything. 
So we want to continue to have that event. We want people to continue learning on that topic. Um, men and women's mental health, of course, that's an ongoing thing. And then the supporting authors um, locally, that's always ongoing. Yes, it's and always all, about networking. Always, and stuff. all our events about networking, bringing people together in our Black community. Yes. Um, we are looking forward to all our events being at Black-owned venues and establishments. So um, always supporting our community. It's going to be dope. Um, 420 friendly is a thing for us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Thing for us. We try yeah. to, you know, we try to keep it comfortable for the hood, too. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where these conversations are needed. And I mean, I am the hood. Like, I need to smoke where I'm at. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, and just like, even when we go in the hood, you know, in the heart of North Philly at this little local bar, and we're telling about our events, they like, Oh, poetry sounds cool. I want to check that out. But it's like that's not what's going to draw them in. They're they're slightly interested, but that's not what's going to draw them in. So when we tell them about all the other things that are going on, it's like, oh, well, this sounds like a vibe. Even if I don't fuck with the poetry, this exactly. just sounds like a vibe. I can network at this event. I can, you know, meet new people, this and that. So and then they get there, and of course the poetry is always dope as shit. So they like, yo, this one killed it. That's one. I like this spoken word shit. We like it too. We want you to like it. <laughs> That's what's up. And even if you don't, you're finding out that that you fucks with that heavy or. Uh, that's not my thing. I was a little bored with that. I couldn't wait for intermission. So, you know what I'm saying? Or it was something else going on. So I went and did that. Like, even at our last event, because it was two floors, um, while the open mic was going on, the bar and, you know, the vibe and everything was downstairs. Some people were back and forth. Like, oh, this is cool. Let me enjoy this. And some people, that just wasn't their twist. But they still had a fucking great time. And they gained something. When they left, they got a little insight on something or they network with somebody and made that connect so as long as everybody leaves with a little something something we feel like you got that insight to take it somewhere else for you Thank whatever you. it is for you yeah and i heard you like people gotta learn how to be takers again we gotta learn how to be takers when someone is given, we got to learn how to take. So coming to our events, that's what we want people to do. We want you to take like a motherfucker, like the vendors, the people you meet, the energy. Take all that in. Be inspired. Be encouraged. Kick yourself in the ass. Whatever it is, take. Like, it's always something for us to receive out here in the universe. And, you know, we deserve it. We got to get it. Exactly. And... I'm heavy on black enterprise. I'm mm -hmm. heavy on um, black Wall Street. I'm heavy on right. us getting back to our rebuild. Exactly. Yes. Rebuild yes. Is, and working on a barter system. Mm -hmm. So Thomas that's a big everything. thing for us. Yes. No, we, we love bartering. Um, <laughs> and that's how it's been we wouldn't done be as, you know, well, where we are here without that option of being able to provide something that someone needs while they provide something that we need. And it's, it feels good at the end of the day. It's like, oh, everything we do is not circled around the white man's paper. Like, what can I give you exactly. from me? And what can you give me from you? So, you know. Yes, what's that saying? Fair exchange. Fair exchange is not robbery. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. We both, we both are supplying a need, um, and that's how we work. We try our best to work that way as much as we possibly can. We know big people got bills and shit, but we big on bartering um, and, and whenever we can. Yes. Have and loving up on our found, black people. Have you ladies found bartering to be more beneficial to expanding the network, you know, as opposed to, like, trying to reach out to different vendors to do the events without the bartering? Um, bartering has been working pretty good for us. I find that bartering is beneficial because it's kind of a little more intimate. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, if I'm offering you a service or, a, you know, an opportunity, that's a little more important than bread. Oh, I can get bread anywhere else. If I don't show up for this person, they'd be all right. They're not going to pay me. 
but I can go get money somewhere else. But if we're bartering off of a service that cannot be provided elsewhere, like um, we'll barter, uh, you know, performance for a vendor fee. Uh, someone, you know, uh, they were like, you know, we want you guys to perform at our event that we're having, um, but I would love to vend at your event. There we go. Let's 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 talk business. <laughs> so yeah, you know, and that makes it more intimate. That makes the business relationship a little more solid as well, and a little more trusting. And that's how you build good, solid business relationships with people. Can I can trust you yeah. to to keep your word, and this has absolutely nothing to do with money. If I can trust you to keep mm -hmm. your word, this is somebody I want to continue doing business with. Exactly. And, you know, we have a stigma of, um, as black people, not doing things correctly. Mm -hmm. Black folks don't like showing up for shit on time. All types of stuff. So, if I can trust you, and I didn't pay you to be professional and respect my time and my hustle, then that's that's a business relationship that can keep going forward. We both prospering. Mm -hmm. And we recycle that back into the community and we do that with the next person. Yes. And then we hook that person up with the person we bartered with. Like, that's black enterprise. <laughs> so with that being said, ladies, it's been that the system that both of you are building, you're making it extremely, I don't want to say easy, but you're making it a lot for people to work with you and for it to be a mutual benefit for parties but we both with this even though y'all have such a business seamless we still gotta deal with the shit so with that being said what is one thing that frustrates y'all the most when pulling the events together in with people that might not be it's y'all um, I think the expectations, um, people's expectations when they come to something, um, you know, we had a, some ven a vendor uh, that was a little disappointed at their sales after an event. And, um, you know, I just, we, I was a little taken aback when I heard that. I was like, oh, wow, I thought you were great. You know, you were, you know, super this and that. I don't want to get into too much detail. Um, but, you know, I, I think those expectations, no one owes you anything. So right. to expect this, this connection to result in this is, is setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. Don't come in with expectations because you're not boxing yourself. If your expectations are this, then you may be cutting off opportunities that you didn't even know came along with this situation. Mm, so, you know, you could have had, um, you could have gotten like a long-term contract with someone or that particular business um, just off of how your presentation was. But because your expectations was here, you didn't necessarily give so much or you might not have networked the way that you should have and you missed that opportunity. So for me, it's just expectations. It um, When people come in and they're like, oh, you know, what's the setup going to be? Or um, how is this? Or, um, you know, I, I think just expectations for the most part. Um, and communication. Yes. <laughs> communication. Clarity and communication. We will repeat some shit over and over yes. to make sure that it's clear. We will run it back. All right, so just to make sure you understood what she said is this, right? <laughs> Let me say it in my terms so that you can get it from two different angles and we all on the same page or something like that. But um, sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter the words or language that you're using the communication just misfires at times. So, um, you know, and it's with anything else. You just keep it pushing. You try to correct it. But I haven't had any situations that I can recall. And Divine, you can go ahead and finish up on that. But I don't think that we've had any situations where um, we wouldn't want to work with anyone in the future. Um, you know, any any disdain or any, you know, stressors like that. Because the stress and good vibes, like, if you come with any type of stress or, you know, disarray, disorganization, and your vibes are not, I don't care what you do. I don't care who your name is, how big it is. You got to keep that shit over there. 
we're good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we're have, not clout we chasing. We don't, people. yes, yes. Like, because the energy was not on our page. We're not bringing our people that energy. We're not doing that. Nope. If that that would be a disservice. Exactly. And that's not what we're about. Mm-hmm. We're about yeah. positive vibes only. Excuse so. me one second. I've got a camel toe, and I'm going to go handle that. <laughs> <laughs> so... So being, how do you ladies judge a successful night? Like, what determines the event being successful in your mind? Like, what does um, it the money? People? She said the money. <laughs> okay, the money? so for, for me, <laughs> judging a successful event um, is, um, our, uh, my people, for the most part, our people are very verbal. So if they didn't have a good time, they gonna fucking let you know. They definitely will. <laughs> so, We've had people coming, we've had people like asking, like, when y'all doing another event? What, what's going on with y'all? What's going on? People asking about my um, sis book. Like, we, like, people, people are very, it's, it's the follow. Yes. You know, it's the follow up. The next day, um, you know, when you see the videos or uh, pictures that people are posting or when people slide into your messages, yes, the message oh, slide. this was awesome, or you see those people again. And they're like, oh, this was awesome. Or I, one that really gets me is the ones who missed out. Mm. So that means somebody told you about it. <laughs> <laughs> that means the street is talking. Me every day since y'all have been, been detailing me. Like, That's oh, fucking man, love. You missed it crazy, this, that, and the third. Like the night of y'all event, I had eight missed calls from her going into detail about the event. And then the Damn. last one was like this long ass 10 minute voice message where I was like tight at myself driving to work the next day. I'm like, I should have called the fuck out today, man. <laughs> <laughs> the event was awesome. It was amazing. Yeah, and the next good. one, um, we're just going to keep getting better and better. Um, you know, this was actually our first fully curated, fully curated <laughs> event by us. So we had to take care of everything and it went off amazing. We learned a lot. Um, we got great feedback. Um, we made a lot of good connections. So the hip hop and healing is going to be dope. Um, women's mental health. We haven't came up with a name with that. It's something we got to work on. Right. Yeah. Health. Since I don't think we're coming, we're doing that until what October. Um, yeah, I think it's October. It's it don't, it don't have to be in order. Yeah. I think it's going to be an October. Because we running that BDSM back around in September. That, so, <laughs> you know, that was 11 something. And it's my birthday month, so we're going to turn all the way the fuck up. Yes. I was like, I, people, people was like, yo, she had her whole ass out, bro. Like, your whole ass was out. I was like, yes, it was. So the next one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Know, yeah. Just, you know what? One thing we really learned from that for that particular event, we definitely need a bigger <laughs> venue. <laughs> no, the house was so packed. We we sold out of our tickets, um, but we did allow you know pay at the door, so it was, it was like nigga heat packed. Like, <laughs> and the after party was lit. Like we didn't yeah. get out there till like four in the morning. Right. Yeah, it was definitely wild. Right. It, it was, was a whole my vibe. friend said it was one of her favorite nights out in a long time. So yes, that friends, yes, so, friends. Yes. So you make sure you said friend. No, we, we having another one. We having a big BDSM birthday bash for me. The mistress okay. is going mm-hmm. down. So we're excited about all our events, and um, we look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. And yes. we are here to stay. So make yes. sure y'all come out. Y'all gotta experience this, man. Y'all got to experience the early shit. So, you know what I'm saying? When so our tickets is like $100 a pop. Y'all will be like, dang. They'll be like, I'm already on the VIP list. Hey, right? <laughs> Not really. And I know that. But no, this is exciting. And I think for us, what one of the easiest things for us to do it, I mean, you know, following your dreams is always, you know, uh, pretty satisfying. But it's the manifestation for me. Um, everything that we speak and we will continuously say this like a broken record everything that we speak comes into fruition because there's a conviction with our belief you know what I'm saying like when you don't have anything left to lose Mm. but everything to gain 
you know what I'm saying? Like we we're so right wholehearted with this, and and the the opportunities is limitless. Are they're they're limitless? Whereas like not just for us, but for the community on a bigger platform. The things that we're looking to do is not just elevating us because we're always going to be you know elevated. We just the vibes is going to keep hey, us sky always, high. Always. Um, but you know it's it's about elevating others who didn't know that they were elevated. You know what I'm saying? So that whole like, oh, I, I go to this and I enjoy this experience, but that's it. Like me, I went to open mics for years, not sharing my shit, like just enjoying, supporting. But deep down inside, I was only getting fulfilled on the surface. Like, inside, I wasn't getting fulfilled because I wasn't sharing my message. I was just receiving the message, which is perfect. That's what it was supposed to be for those times. But now that it is time for me to, you know, share my messages and stuff like that, they're not for me. I wrote whatever I wrote because I learned the message. Mm. So everything that I'm sharing is to elevate someone else. Everything that we do is to literally elevate the community yes. on some, especially inner city. Like Philly is so dope. I'm a Jersey girl, but I love Philly. Like, you know, just the culture, the, the soul, the blood, sweat, and tears. I love everything that Philly has given to me. So I'm going to do what I can to give that shit back. So, yeah. That's that. It. We here. Like we in this bitch. <laughs> so, what was it? Uh, what actually called you to the stage? Like, what was the motivating factor to first get you onto the stage for the first time? Uh, for me, it was family, um, and not like blood family, but like going to those uh, open mics all those years and just supporting. And then um, a couple of months ago, someone uh, who was hosting those open mics years ago, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Just Words. Um, it used to be right on Cecil B. Moore and Broad. And uh, one of the hosts, Sam I Am, he started hosting an open mic down West Philly at this place called the Bayou Jazz Lounge, 50th in Baltimore. <laughs> And um, so one night I was like, oh, you know, let me go. And because it was so intimate, because it was family, it made me hop on the mic. Like, I've been rocking out with these niggas for like over 15, 20 years. And that's where we actually. That's um, where we met. We didn't know that we were running around in this same circle, circle for years. Like, we've literally been in the same events for years. We're we'll like, oh, yeah, I remember that event. Oh, you was there? Yeah, yeah I was exactly. there. So, so <laughs> it, it was crazy. Was then. That's manifestation. So, yeah, you know. Know, just put us together exactly when we were supposed to be together because we could have met years ago but we didn't we met at that moment at that place mm -hmm. at that time and we just been we've been rocking out together we was like oh let's go to this poetry show in texas and, bam, and we went to the poetry <laughs> show in texas <laughs> and while we were there we was like when we get home we're gonna start putting together our own shit and that's what we did <laughs> and that's literally what happened and God is good. Yeah, so everything we <laughs> asked for, everything we said we needed, it came to us. Like literally came to us, fell in our lap, and it's been dope. And we, we, I think because we're so pure with it, and we're doing it for the community and for our people, it's gonna continue to prosper. Mm -hmm. yes. So this was pretty much like a calling for the both of you, like on an individual sense, before you guys even yes. started to bring this idea together. So Yeah, I've been doing poetry for, like, I've been actually getting on the stage for a minute, and then I, I fell off for a while. Like, I performed it. I performed at Just Words. I performed at The Harvest. I did it. But I I don't think my heart was in it like it is now. And then oh, I think I remember you performing at the Harvest though. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> I, like, I would actually get on stage like I'm a bold ass female. Like I would fuck my nerves. I would I would get up on stage and make it happen. So I've been doing it for years, and then six years I kind of took off. Um, got into the dominatrix things, had some babies, life was lifing, and then you know I got called back when I was supposed to come back. I'm Never knew. In a sense, what called you back? What called you back after that six year hiatus? What was that one thing? Mm, yes. um, so, in that six years, I um I got into a, a really deep relationship. Um, I had two kids. 
He was extremely abusive. He was verbally abusive. He was physically abusive. He was mentally abusive. And um, I actually did a piece for um, Voices in Power about it, and they put me up finally. Um, and I got out of that relationship, and I was like, you know what? This man wasted six years of my life. I had two beautiful children, thank God, but I I'm, I know who I am, and I let him make me forget. And at this point in my life, I'm not going to let anybody ever do that to me again. I am a poet. And I, I stopped being that to make somebody else happy. And I'm never going to do that again. So that's what brought me back. Like, this, I'm going to live in my truth. I'm going to live my life. And I'm going to be happy and do the things that make me happy. And poetry makes me fucking happy. And that's on period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> the drink is kicking in there. <laughs> I, I love the energy. <laughs> that's, that's. Yeah, so that's what brought me back. I got called home. You have to learn how to relax a little bit. You Damn. see me? That's all I do. <laughs> everybody wants to talk to us. We all vibe. We all vibe. Everybody wants to talk to us. <laughs> we'll also average. be doing some pop up poetry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, pop up where poetry. we're just going to, you know, have our speaker and microphone. Um, you know, it might be some food on the grill in the park. It might be, you know, the water park, waterfall area. Like, we're just going to be popping up. Thanks, Landon. It's popping up. On um, you know, whoever of our poet friends will be available. We'll pop up with them. We'll go live. Whoever wants to come out, you know. And that's part of learning, you know, who you are and your purpose is opportunities like that where you can't think about it again like you know you go you'll see it on like oh shoot they're doing a pop up poetry two blocks from me this is my opportunity let me go out there and hop on that mic yes. so yeah we're definitely going to be starting pop up poetry so that's going to be dope yes, gonna pop up poetry. oh yes yes okay. yes yeah, so um <laughs> one of our vendors that was supposed to be at the event on Thursday um she has an amazing clothing line and she's having a, if you know that, then you know, um, a night market pop-up um, vendors. So we're actually doing our first um, pop-up poetry there on the 28th. So we'll be popping up at her event and laying down some poetry, setting, helping her set the vibe. Um, it's going to be dope. The night markets are always amazing. Um, 420 friendly as always. We're gonna have people selling edibles. They got clothes and all types of stuff. So it's gonna be dope. It's gonna be at Clementine's Urban Bistro, um, off of Swing Night for Allegheny. Go ahead. It's gonna be dope. So that's the 28th. And if you go on our page, that's B N C I T H E E Insight 513. We're gonna be posting um the flyer for that and we're working on you know our fly i make all the flyers i be busy as shit so i work <laughs> on my flyers oh uh, so if y'all catch a typo when i'm drawing make sure my, you DM yes, me. Yes, DM me, my bad my bad they be flying shit though they be flying shit. i be trying child i be trying <laughs> right on or let me know if i got a typo like our my, our vibe, all of our decor we make our own decor. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's the we be heart crafting that the goes shit. into We be crafting the shit out of stuff. We do rehearsals. <laughs> we, you know, we make sure that the ambiance is right. We make sure that our, you know, the venue, uh, the venue owner is, you know, comfortable, excited. Our vendors are comfortable and excited. Because if you're not excited, you can't come. Exactly. That works in more ways than one. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I heard somebody wanted to hear some of our poetry. What the fuck is it? Oh yeah. yeah. Because it's I not real. That's what it meant. I got it. Too. I want to. But I also Same. want to. Um, Oh, no, I'm saying I do want you guys to share poetry if you still want to. But I also wanted, before we got into that, to kind of understand, like, 
the process you ladies go through when you're writing your poetry? Like, what is she writing? Oh, out? Lord. <laughs> that be on some straight ADHD shit. Like, I, I, and, and I don't sleep. Like I was telling y'all earlier, like, I don't sleep. I'm not. Yes, I'm not a sleeper. So um, I'm up. Like, I get ideas, like, literally throughout the day. So I always have my recorder on my phone. I always have a pen. I always have paper. If I don't have paper, I'll write on a fucking napkin. I'll write on my hand until I can get somewhere to write it down. But I write my, my pieces in, like, increments, like, bits and pieces. I'll write a 16 here. Uh, and I used to be a rapper, and my family, a couple people in my family, so I know about writing bars and stanzas and shit like that. So I write my poetry like that. So I'll write a couple bars, and then it'll it'll be somewhere in a piece of paper, and I'll write more bars. And, like, literally, I've been woken up out my sleep by words that will not let me sleep, and I've had to write them down. So my my style of writing my poetry is sometimes I'll pick a theme and I'll sit and actually write on that theme. But most of the time, I'm like literally writing bars all day in my head and shit, and I kind of just puzzle piece them together later. That's that's what I did. I like it. Yeah, I think that's just the the crazy part of being an artist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we can all kind of relate to um, getting the art out. In that way, the ADHD, I've had poems that have taken me 15 years to complete. You know, I may have started it when I was 17 and finished it when I was, you know, 30 and stuff like that. Or you'll have something that meant something at some time and then it'll mean something different. So you'll add to it or you'll change it and you'll read it this way at this venue or, you know, stuff like that. For me, um... My writing is always, like, inspired in the moment. So I kind of tell myself what I want to write about in the moment. Like, you know, I'm like, I want to write a a poem about my sons. I want to write a poem about, you know, something that I feel like is growing a lot or uh, on the spot. Uh, A lot of times when family members die, uh, my family is like, hey, are you going to read a poem at the funeral? So, you know, I don't have that much time to prepared to read for something like that so it's very personal it's very i have to focus i have okay what was my relationship with this person what did that person mean to everyone else on a general level so um for the most part i allow myself to free write but discipline is needed from time to time Exactly. <laughs> she put. She's so fucking wordy. She put that perfectly. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> right. right. I, can, I, I concur. Yes. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> so right now, I do want to open the platform to you, ladies. If y'all do want to share pieces, if y'all don't, that's perfectly fine. We can continue with the conversation. But I did want to open up the platform to you guys as well because we did discuss that. Um, but, uh, if you aren't ready to share or don't want to share, I do have some more questions, so let me know. Um, I would love to share these. Yeah, we're always ready to share. Yes. Give y'all some of this work. I mean, I, I, I got a couple things to do, so, you know what I mean? We're going to keep this thing rushing. Like, wait, what? Oh, wait, what? You cut out. Wait, what what you? Russian roulette and what? No, no, fuck Russian roulette. Nah, nah, nah. That was a horrible example. Horrible. I'm just saying, when you ladies, as far as you ladies sharing, we're not going to have you ladies sharing by yourselves because we're writers as well. You know what I mean? We're also, oh, we know. We're also going to be doing It's about to be a whole cipher, is what you're saying. <laughs> it's called, uh, you, want, you want a cipher. Yeah. We've done them before. We've done, pop, we've done pop-up ciphers. We make I'm sorry, sorry, guys. This chair is so cool. I know I'm over here with the acrobatic <laughs> shit. This chair is fucking amazing. Can you pass me the phones? I can show them the chair real quick. <laughs> Y'all gotta see these chairs, yeah. Look at these chairs. Can y'all see the chairs? I do. Yeah. With the back, they got faces on. They got faces on the back of the chairs. See? And they rock. These chairs so. are so fucking cool. All right. There you go. Can you put that back, please? Uh, yeah, um, I'm about to share. Yeah, Miss Mine. Come on. I'm about to share first, and then I'll hand her the phone so she can share. Okay. Um, let's see what I got for y'all. I'm gonna do something short. Are we doing erotic? I'm gonna do whatever my 
I, I don't know. I'm gonna just do something. All right, let me go off for you. Right. I'm probably gonna do something about it then. <laughs> you know, I'm dirty. Can't help it. Um. Okay, this one is called uh, the proposal. I'm getting by on my wicked ways. Red lipstick all over your zipper. Say you want to let me go, but you've never been a quitter. Watch our shadows dance in the candlelight. I know sometimes you forget her. Just show her who you are through my lens. See, we have sexual telepathy. I want to see you find a way. Use that ingenuity. I can't be your big secret, but I'll keep you reaching. See, your old head is speaking. Listen up when I'm teaching. You craving these lips. You want to grab on these hips. If you really want to touch, baby, you just got to reach in. Tell her that you need me, but there's room for one more. Let go. Have some fun. Leave your judgment at the door. Life's too short to pass up a good time. Sit back, relax, just unwind. Let your hair down, honey. Have that third guess of wine. I'm getting by on my wicked ways. I can make her feel so divine. Drop your clothes on the floor, 65 plus four. One or two more orgasms. See, who's keeping score? Shut up. Because your shit can get it too. When she hit this game, I spit at you. See, threesome more critical. Oh, yeah, she might get rid of you. I got good pussy energy. I move naturally on purpose. See, don't want to make you nervous, but I've only scratched the surface. Damn, should I stop? Oh, fuck. Um, damn, should I stop? Fuck, 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 I lost it. See, you threw me off. It's all love. It's all love. Why you ain't pulling up on the phone? Because I was trying. I'm, I'm memorizing. She's such a hater. <laughs> she, and like literally when we had shows, she sits in the audience and fucking heckles me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she, nigga, we heckle each other. <laughs> um, let me see. Only scratch. I'm going to so I only scratch the surface. Damn, should I stop? Because baby, it gets deeper. Don't want us to meet because you're afraid you can't keep her? Okay. No pillow talk, no kiss and tell, TV on, volume down, because you love to hear me yell. This ain't about ownership. I have excitement in store. Watch me suck it, lick it, bite it. How much can you endure? Say she want to be in charge sometimes, so you got to give up your power in the bed, or against the wall, or on the kitchen counter. Ride them slow, you'll stroke me deep, both of us. Flowing like a river. Tell me what you need, baby, because I can deliver. I'm getting by on my wicked ways. Now there's lipstick all over my collar. I throw my tongue around her plate, and she want to moan and holler. Lays extended, tie those wrists, see you've been apprehended. Stretching recommended. Poke that ass out, baby, keep that back bended. Still getting by on my wicked ways. My red lipstick's all smeared, crooked grins, soft skin, sex job to be revered. Yes, tonight was splendid. I'm so glad you both attended. Just remember, don't spend your life unhappy because you're so easily offended. Mm. Thank you. I fought with that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So that piece was... um. Written basically for uh, couples and relationships. I have, I like I said, being a dominatrix, I've kind of come across a lot of different relationships, and men have a habit of hiding things from their significant other or their partner. So that piece I wrote um, coming from the other end, like the mistress, um, just letting him know, like, look. This ain't got to be just about us. Like, I don't have to be your secret. Like, talk to your wife or your girlfriend or whatever the case may be. And let her know what you're doing. And maybe we can just all have some fun. Like, communicate. Right so it's right about on. communication. Yeah. And that, my, that last line is my favorite. Like, don't spend your life unhappy because you're so easily offended. Yeah. I know. That stood out to me, too. Yeah, that's one of my favorite lines. Because people are offended so damn easily. And I'm not letting nobody mess up my day because it's some shit they said. 
All right, so Miss Jasper's up next. Here I is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my shit memorized, so I'm going to read it. I'm just letting y'all know that I'm reading. Cool, huh? I don't got mine huh? memorized either. Oh. <laughs> All right. Touch me, tease me. I'm so good at pleasing me. Alone in my room, I go hard. No need to take it easy. Phone on silent, don't need no disturbances. Because I'm about to take flight, rock my own world. Call it intimate turbulence. I take my time and set the scene just right. Candles, yoni oils, no clocks, no time. Because this could take all night. And I don't need to call my dealer when I already know how to get myself high with just a touch. And now the vibrations got me lifted, something like a natural healer. Getting all touchy-feely, skin glowing, I smile as I look in the mirror. It's like I can hear her calling my name, telling me she wants to play. Moans getting louder, we must be on our way with no delay. Because we've done this before. Late nights, early mornings, when she calls, my inhibitions go out the door. Set adrift on memory bliss. I know her inside and out. I've been making her come long before any man could settle the score. It's called self-satisfaction, and with every touch comes a reaction. Body shaking, energy fading, I'm giving me all the passion. And no, we not acting, I'm just giving me what these niggas must be lacking. And now I'm laughing as I look down at my yellow lingerie on the floor. My breathing starts to settle and I'm thinking to myself, maybe one round more. But damn, I must got the touch. Did I just hear myself start to snore? Yeah, I put me to sleep simply because I know what I need. No need to sneak, no need to creep. I'm always loyal to her, even when someone else is on the scene. Even when I let someone else join our team, they better know how to play the game right because she and I play for keeps. Yeah, this shit gets deep. And the way her back be arching, you would think somebody was inside like nine inches deep. Yes. But nah, it's just me. Because I'm so good at pleasing me. I could teach you, but I would have to charge. Because learning to make me come as well as I do is not going to be easy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, it's about handling shit on your own. And I just feel like that's so, so important because we be out here in the world doing shit and expecting people to do shit and expecting people to know shit when you don't know what you like or don't like. And, you know, so, yeah. And at the end of the day, if these niggas ain't acting right, I'm good. So, yeah. <laughs> because we always want the real thing, you know, if, if that's available. <laughs> but if it ain't, but if it ain't, we good. <laughs> so yeah, Are you guys gonna share now? Yeah. Oh, Jay, you want me to go or you want to go? I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it. Don't make it. <laughs> All right, so this poem I wrote today is basically based upon a lot of the things that I saw while running around. You know what I mean? It was a long day today. You know what I mean? I was a she had a pop-up shop. I came here to visit. The, you know what I'm saying? To give us some people to pop up before I head back up to the You know what I mean? But um, I decided, you know, since I, I, don't, I never really wrote about sex like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, as far as poetry-wise. Not intentionally, Ooh. like rap, sure. Bars, put some shit together, flip slap the root with that bop. Smooth, like whatever. But like actually Ooh, like focus on out. like a poetry song and making that you know what I mean, playing some words, I say, you know what? Let me just take my environment into consideration and let's play with some words and see what we come up with. So that's what I have here, you know. Let's do yes. Bumblebee rhythm. Honey flavored folds of fleshy golden flaps flopping over wave after feeding wave of nectar goodness gushing from unpollinated floral cores. My love, let me ease you of this delicious burden. 
as I carry the weight of your mouth, watering taste upon quivering lips, salivating and begging anticipation for your next trip. Drip, splash, sploosh, splatter, slather. You say that. Enamel, enamored by your energy. Butter some biscuits, my love. Breakfast is served. Hey. Hey. Yes. Yes. You better say that. I definitely like the Uber reference too at the end. Right? Oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> the word play. Love you. <laughs> All right, so my joint is just a shorty. Um, it's really just honestly talking about the the initial process of when you see someone in the streets that you're attracted to. And, and just, you know, the approach of, you know, starting up the conversation and get the ball rolling. So, um, we ready. We ready. Huh? We ready. <laughs> Are y'all ready? <laughs> I just heard Tiffany had this in my mind when you said that. Like, <laughs> so, all right. So, I see, I see you walking, girl. Your body's calling, it's pulling at my soul. The way you're wearing that dress, you already know. Mm. I see your lips slowly dripping with sweat. And I'm thinking, what we could do next? Right. Your hair, I'm fantasizing how I would pull. And your, li and your legs, I'm seeing them spread. I'm thinking, oh, damn, I messed up that mind. <laughs> I'm seeing your legs spread. That's okay, run, run it back. back, run it back. That's okay, King, but keep it coming. I'm seeing your legs spread. And all I want to do is stuff what's in between them. Damn. <laughs> <And> girl, <laughs> I, I was in my bag a little bit. And girl, everything about you is just calling at me. Now, I could be a full savage, and I could just come up to you and tell you what I want to do. Or I can unwind you, let you reveal to me all that you need, and have you slowly tell me how you like for me to please you. And that's all I got right now on it. Damn! Yeah, that was cool. Okay. Okay. Yes. Say that. Yes. <laughs> I so, like that. Yeah, yes, yeah. I still want to talk you. to you. I want that finished, okay? Yeah, that's what I said. But I that feeling like that, that anticipation of meeting yeah. somebody and having those imaginations of what you know being out with them would be like, being intimate would be like, what their body need is like, like that shit is dope. I like it because you know I, I get the I get it a few times like whether it is like. I have an initial conversation with a girl, or even if I just see her in passing and a look may catch my eye and be like, you know, even if I don't say something to her, it's the thought of, you know what? I wonder how she would be like, you know, or what I would do to her, like if we was in that space, you know, that really kind of draws me into one or honestly pursue her. Like if I don't have that initial, that initial lust, then I, the pursuit right. really won't be there for me. Mm -hmm. That's me. I'm like that. I'm a great. What uh, about when the lust is disappointed? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> when you're lusting after too. someone and you do, you know, make that move, and it's like, oh, okay, this this is what you were. Like yeah. you know, like basic bitch. Like it wasn't all flowers and roses, right. like I thought. <laughs> I've, I've I've experienced that a lot more than. The, the opposite, you know, and in those experiences for me, I've always tried to like either shift them either into friendship or I kind of just was honest about the situation, just left it where it was at, you know, just like, you know what, this, this energy just really not vibing where I thought it was going to be. I actually had a conversation with a girl like last month ago, last month where I had that conversation with her and she was like real interested into pursuing things more, but the energy for me just really wasn't what I was looking for or what I thought she was going to be. And I ain't even right. want to play the situation. Well, that's okay. Yeah. It happens. She happens. Yeah, she became a friend, you know. And it's been beneficial, you know. 
I enjoy the friendship aspect about that relationship with her. More now with that, the, the intimacy, you know. So it was still a win. It was still a win. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was still a win. That's all that matters. Yep. <laughs> It's been a lot. Of, it's been a lot of things she done shared though. Help me get into the female mind a little bit better. But we rounding. Well, we passed the hour mark a while ago. <laughs> 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 and it's getting loud in here. It is. I think the events that we were at is over. <laughs> <laughs> so we just gonna leave our lasting words. Y'all know how we go. Um, just some last words for the show, you know. Uh, Jetty, you can start off, then the ladies, y'all can take over and I'll wrap us up. Oh, that's it, man. That's the first real simple. Y'all follow BN513. Y'all get down with these events that these ladies are throwing. Y'all get familiar with the shit that these ladies are putting down, the knowledge, the motherfucking experience, the motherfucking events. Y'all get familiar with these ladies. That's my lasting words. Really, that simple. Hey, thank you. Oh, are we next? Are we next? Yes. Um, let's see. Make enterprise, positive vibes. Um, support our community. That's what I got. If you ain't at our next event, then 2023 won't be starting this shit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's it. You did amazing. <laughs> we, we, we watching a burlesque thing. So. Yeah, if she did kill it. Uh, hold on, my audio messing up. I didn't hear the last part, guys. Definitely need to have a cook off. Like I've been seeing the Bobby Flay uh, shows where he where he cook off against the other chefs, and that'd be loud. We can have like a little thing. You and me. Have you checked out my, um, my cooking page. Oh yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Send it. Send a link to PBM or to me personally. All right, I got you. Yeah, that way you I can follow that joint too. <laughs> oh yeah, well you we follow it at PBM too. You know. But thank you, ladies, for joining us once again, you know, coming up on the show, of sharing course. these gems. Everyone, please support the events. You know, remember, at every event by the Insight 513, you must bring your energy and yes, positive vibes like only. Right. <laughs> positive vibes only at any the Insight event, you know. So, ladies, thank y'all for sharing. Uh, it's... We, you have an event upcoming July 28th, right? Um, yeah, we have a July 28th at the night market at Time Urban Bistro. Um, jump on our page, The Insight. We'll have all the info plugged on there. The Insight 513. Follow us. Cash app us if you want to, because the cash app is the same. Instagram. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yes, the 28th. That's, That's the next time. You said yeah. the next topic is what? That's the next the, time. The next we'll be out event. in these streets together. Oh. The 28th. And then keep a, keep a lookout for those <laughs> other two events, Hip Hop and Healing. And then we want to circle back around to the BDSM. Y'all too. 
and the BDSM. Uh, so the audio right? is messing up some. All right, thanks know. for it's having us, guys. We got to go ahead and log out. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you Much for joining love. us. All right. Much love. Uh, until the next time, this has been Positive Vibes Navy. I'm Dash. This is my brother, Jetty A Track. Our special guests for tonight were The Insight 513. Make sure you follow, like, and subscribe to anything that the ladies have going on, as well as anything going on here over at PVM. So make sure you guys tap into the YouTube channel and subscribe to our YouTube page at Positive Vibes Maybe. Uh, connect with Jetty for all your dad hats. Connect with me for your smoothies. You know, definitely at Fly Em Out. And until next time, we'll see you guys Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the rest of the night. Enjoy your night. You know, live it up. Enjoy your vices. Pour a glass of wine. Smoke a little something. And just kick back, relax, and let life happen. This has been Positive Vibes, maybe. We'll see y'all.